Charitam, Charitam, the character, Parama, Parama, exalted, exalted, Abutam, and wonderful. <coughs> Translation and purport by the followers of Shilpa. King Parikshit said, My dear Lord, you have elaborately described the dynasties of both the moon god and the sun god with exalted and wonderful character of the kings. Please kindly respond for the people. King Parikshit said, My dear Lord, you have elaborately described the dynasties of both the moon god and the sun god. With exalted and wonderful character of the kings. So let us uh, listen to this wonderful buffer very attentively. <clears throat> At the end of the ninth canto, 24th chapter, Sukadeva Goswami summarized the activities of Krishna. He spoke of how Krishna had personally appeared to reduce the boiling of the earth, how he had manifested his pastimes uh, past as a household, and how soon after his birth he had transferred himself to his Rajabhumi leader. Parikshit Maharaj, being naturally a devotee of Krishna, wanted to hear more about it. Lord Krishna, therefore, to encourage Sukadeva Goswami to continue speaking about Krishna and give further details. He thanks Sukadeva Goswami for having described the activities of Krishna in brief. Sukadeva Goswami had said, Jatogata Pitrukri Hat Prajan Editato Hatarupu Sutta Satani Kritu Rudra Opanda Teshu Purusaha Katubi Samiji Atmana Atmanibna Atma Nigam Pataya Janisu Translation The Supreme Personality of God is Sri Krishna, known as Lila Purusotana, appeared as the son of Vasudeva, but immediately left his father's home and went to Vrindavan to expand his loving relationship with his confidential devotees. And from that when the Lord killed many demons, and afterward he returned to Dwarka, where, according to Vedic principles, he married many wives, <coughs> who were the best of women, because through them hundreds of sons, and performed sacrifices for his own worship to establish the principles of household life. This is from the Bhagavatam 9 Canto, chapter 24, text 66. The Yahoo dynasty belonged to the family descending from Soma, the moon god. Although the planetary systems are so arranged that the sun comes first before the moon, Parikshit Maharaj gave more respect to the dynasty of the moon god, the Soma Vansa, because in the Yadava dynasty, describing uh, descending from the moon, Krishna had appeared. There are two different chapter families of the royal order, one descending from the king of the moon planet, and the other descending from the king of the sun. Whenever the Supreme Personality of God appears, he generally appears in the chapter family because he comes to establish religious principles and the life of Righteousness. According to the Vedic system, the Chakshu family is the protector of the human race. When the Supreme President of God had appeared as Lord Ramachandra, he appeared in the Sudhya Vansu, the family descended from the Sun God. And when he appeared as Lord Krishna, he did so in the Yadu dynasty or the Yadu Vansu, whose descent was from the moon God. In the ninth canto, 24th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a long list of the kings of the Yadu Vansa. All the kings in both the 
son of Bamsa, and so the Bamsa were great and powerful. And man has preached, praised them very highly. Rajan, Jobaya, Bamsiana, Charitan, Paramaguta. Nonetheless, he wanted to hear more about the son of Bamsa because that was the dynasty in which Krishna had appeared. The supreme abode of the personality of God and Krishna is described in Brahma Samhita as the abode of Chintana. Chintamani Prakarasa Masu Karpa Vriksha Laksha Vritesu Surabi Abhibalaya Tan. The Vrindavan Dam on this earth is a replica of the same abode, as stated in Bhagavad Gita, age 20. In the spiritual sky, there is an order, eternal nature, transcendental to manifested and unmanifested man. The manifested world can be seen in the form of many stars and planets, such as the sun and moon, but beyond this is the unmanifested, which is imperceptible to those who are embodied. And beyond this unmanifested matter is the spiritual kingdom, which is described in Bhagavad Gita as supreme and eternal. That kingdom is never annihilated, although material nature is subject to repeated creation and annihilation. That that spiritual nature remains as it is, eternally. In the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the spiritual nature, the spiritual world, is described as Vrindavan, Goloka, Vrindavan, or Rajatam. The elaborate description of the above mentioned sloka from the nine cantos, Jatugatha Pitubriha, will be found here in the tenth canto. Om again to the answer, not an answer. Sexual metam, yen to smile, so jetai on this time, star feature, yen to the book. The Lord is not a man. When we see Krishna Chaitanya, Nietzsche and his abode, go to die, it is a man to Chaitanya. Panchakaputa Yenu Chaitanya, the same way, Chaitanya, Baba, Vashnaya. Jaya see Krishna Chaitanya, the Lord is a man. See the creator, the Lord is a man. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram. So the whole of the chapter is giving us an insight about the advent of Lord Krishna, of course. The Ten Kanto is basically uh, about Krishna and uh, his leaders. So the Lord appears uh, whenever there is some discrepancy. Uh, in the principles of religion, and when there is a predominance of the rise of unscrupulous elements who are masquerading as leaders of society. <coughs> so, in this text, you find that the commentators made a very uh, nice argument, nice point here. <coughs> About the position of Maru's friction, instead of giving due uh, deference to the Son of God, he was very much concerned. He was rather very much concerned with the, uh, with the moon or with the uh, son of man. Why? Because that is a dynasty, or that is a lineage that you know a Krishna appeared on his heart. And so basically for man's prediction and for any other serious devotee, they are not very much interested. They are not very, not very much interested in the glaring manifestations of the different facets of the illusory energy. But even 
produce a manifestation of the illusory energy, and if it has something to do with Krishna, then that becomes the basic concern of the pure devotee. So this is more or less like uh, the principle of Sambhavika, because basically the connection of any element with Krishna, that is what enthuses the devotee to really become attached to that and become uh, very much enthused to discuss about it. So Maharaj Prakshin, he was stressing, he was giving uh, due deference to this uh, the summer Bansa because that is what that, that is the lineage that Krishna uh, appeared. And so he had requested Sukadeva Goswami to discuss more hmm, about Krishna and his wonderful leader. Krishna is called Lila Purusota. When he appeared, he invented a different type of pastimes, and we call them leaders. For those who do not understand, they may judge Krishna that, oh, you, if this is your God, he's just playing in the dead of night with or my girls. But that is a leader. And who are even the so called of my girls? They are his devotees who descended from Guruka uh, Vrindavan to be able to be with him. I mean, like they are. The president of the country is going somewhere, and they are normally there's an entourage. Sometimes the members of the entourage have to go before the president. Then they meet there, but then the point is they have to be together to be able to execute what the president is doing. So even law Christians happen, this is something that is uh, very uh, dominant in. Uh, in the advent of Lord Krishna, that even the gopis. Remember when, <clears throat> uh, when it was announced to, uh, when Lord Brahma went to uh, this, the, the shore of the Great Ocean to petition the Lord uh, based on the proposition or the plea of Mother Bodhi. And when the Lord actually gave the message, he mentioned that he was going to be that. You know, Krishna will be coming, and that people from his own abode will also be coming. In fact, he ordered the demigods to even take bed in the yard, the same Yadu dynasty. So, the Yadu dynasty is very important to Maharaj Krishna. Just like it is important to every other uh, affected soul. Because it has to do with Krishna. One other point that uh, is mentioned in the Papa is how uh, Brickshit executed some appreciative thing. He had actually praised the, uh, the kings, the kings of the uh, Surya Bangsa, and of course also the, uh, the Sumer Bangsa. So this is symptomatic of uh, a perfected soul. They are very much appreciative of what people have done. The conditioned soul is very critical. They don't look at the good of what people have done. They look at, they find, even on a white cloth, if you examine a white cloth with a bad white cloth from the factory, if you examine it critically, meticulously, with a microscope, you will find, you'll find some dust, some dust on it. <laughs> it's just not fresh from the factory, you'll find dust. A devotee doesn't waste his time to examine the to examine the white cloth to find to figure out the dead. He looks at the white cloth. How wonderful. The guys who made this did a lot of job. This is the mindset of Mary's prediction. He was praising the kings. So this is, this also is reflected uh, in the life of Paramahamsas. They are uh, always looking for the good, and they see the good in everyone. But conditioned souls, we conditioned souls, I uh, mean, just like we have, you know, scholars. I remember one time when, when I was preaching in Africa, so we, we went to an academic conference, and this, one of these young uh, professors who organized the conference, he came to call us, the young scholars. 
And he said, hey guys, come over here, come over here. Go to that hall. This is not just professor is giving it, is presenting his paper there. Go and find fault with him. Go and find fault. He thinks he knows too much. Go find fault. This is how we are grown in the academy. Find fault. The devotional culture is different. We find the good. We find the good and the positive. And therefore, even this Bible term, you find that it may have some apparent fault, but that could be just some, you know, typically a situation where one is blinded by the little energy, so he could, he, he, even in Bible time, you can find fault in Bible time. If you're really blinded by the little energy, why not? You blinded by the little energy, you can also find fault in all of the very literature. Why not? But the concern of the devotee is like a swine. A swine. He goes and picks the best out of even the worst situation. So, the stories of the Bible are there, the purpose of Prabhupada and Prabhupada are there, the purpose of his followers are there. But what is important to us is the implications of these purpose, the implications of this verse to our everyday reality. Otherwise, it becomes stories. Yes, the stories are very purifying. Why not? But how does it apply to us? Appreciative thinking. We should be appreciative thinkers. Like Maharaj Krishna was appreciating the wonderful activities of the kings. A devotee is never jaded of hearing the Lord's pastime. He never gets bored. Hey, it's too much. When is he going to stop? <laughs> So sometimes you, know, you find that we are more anxious for the discussions of a Christian, you know, to come to an end than being eager to listen more. So we find the example of my friendship. He wants to hear more. He said, come on, keep, keep talking, keep talking. I'm not tired, I'm not jaded. This is a sign of an elevated consciousness. And so it is important, important for us to invite this type of, to consciously learn and practice to invite this type of consciousness. Because the symptom of someone who is becoming purified that he wants to listen to the leaders of Krishna all his time. He has no time to listen to disco music. <laughs> he has no time to watch some, you know, some Monday movie for excitement. He wants, he is absorbed. This is the mode of my prediction. So if we are trying to be devotees, we should be adopting this type of moves. In the beginning it may be, it may look boring, but with practice, we get acclimatized to that with the ensuing purification. People are interested in stories. If you tell, if you're speaking about, if someone is gossiping, everybody or people around, they want to hear more. Uh huh. What happened? Yeah. Why did this? Happen? Why did she say? Why did she do? Why did they do? We're interested in gossip, but when it comes to Krishna Kata, when is he going to stop? <laughs> the gossip continue. Krishna Kata. When is he going to stop? <laughs> so Parish is totally the opposite. Parish, he is from Krishna Kata. Please, the day was family. Team, I want to hear more. So this is the wonderful legacy that Prabhupada has left for us. We should try to read his books. 
and understand better how we should be relating to the leaders of the personality of God. How we should. In fact, a Christian appeared. And one of his one of his basic first leaders was to kill a demon, to kill a woman. What does that imply to us? I mean, women are bad. Let me say, some may talk it though, because women are very bad, and so that's why Krishna killed a woman first. But that's not true. All of the all of the demons that Krishna killed, they depict a specific type of vices in their own personal lives. And so by reading this past times, this, uh, uh, this uh, past times of uh, Krishna killing the demons, we, we eradicate a particular type of sinful desires in our consciousness. And so it's a matter of really understanding, but in Uttar gives an elaborate explanation about practically about all of the all of the different uh, leaders of Krishna in the in, 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 in event of killing the demons. So we do have some demonic tendencies. We do have some demonic tendencies. We do have. <laughs> so we pray for Krishna to create the, de the, de the demonic tendencies in us. If we deny that we don't have demonic tendencies, then we're not being honest. Because we do have the tendency to control. We do have a tendency to enjoy. Ishwar Rohan, Aham Bhogi, Sirohan, Balohan Suki. These are demonic tendencies. I am the controller. I am perfect. Hey, I am correct. What are you talking about? You're just a new devotee. What are you talking about? Why do you know? I know it all. This is a phenomenological mindset. It looks like a very nice word, but it means demonic mindset. <laughs> so, important event for us is to study Sila Prabhupada's books very meticulously. What Prabhupada mentioned, scrutinizingly. Why? For the purpose of purifying our heart. And so, for the purpose of getting, getting insight into the depths of the philosophical concepts and constructs of Krishna consciousness. And so what? So that we can apply, we, so that we'll be able to develop the ability to apply those concepts and constructs in our own life to create a transformation. The world is in our hands. We just have to know how to transform the world. Oh yeah, because all of the solutions to the world problems, social, uh, political, economic, they are all there in the very British. And so especially for young people, you know, the future of this society is in your hands. We're getting old, very soon we get, we get picked up from these bodies. And therefore, it behooves all of you young people to be very diligent and scrutinizing to study these books. I remember when I joined, my spiritual master personally mentioned to us, read these books, read Papa's books. That was his major emphasis. Why? We need knowledge, we need purification, and we need to create a positive change. And the change we want to create has to begin with us. If you and myself, if we are not living our lives towards creating a viable future, yes, it's done. If we are not living our lives as if we are being watched, then we might eventually forget that Krishna is there in our hearts. The same Krishna would appear in the prison 
It's also there in your heart that is bad man. And therefore, it's important. I mean, it's, when we come together, we should remind ourselves about our mission. Because it's very easy if you go to, if you are here in the college, it's very easy to forget the purpose of your being on campus. Very easy because there are so many attractive features. And most cases, it's free, free sense enjoyment. So the unintelligent student may easily forget why he or she is on campus. So also sometimes we come to the temple, we are very enthusiastic in the beginning, after some few years, you know, and feel comfortable. And that is when my aunt starts creeping in. And so, the Supreme Presidente of Godhead, little Buddha Sultan, Allah Krishna himself, he abandoned himself to be able to create awareness of the need to walk towards emancipation from the illusory entanglement. That is his main purpose of coming. To create all of these leaders so that we can discuss about them and purify ourselves. To protect the sadhus. So, Krishna is always there to protect the sadhus. The question is, how are we becoming sadhus? We should become sadhus. How do we become sadhus? How? Yes? Want to say something? How do we become sadhus? Yes? Associate with sadhus. Papa gives example. If you put an iron nail into fire, gradually the nail will acquire the qualities of fire. So, we have been given everything. Sometimes people are working in an office, they say, they complain, we don't have the resources. Papa has given us all of the resources. It's giving us everything. We don't have excuses. Read the books. If you don't read the books, one day you will be cheated. Read the books. If you don't read the books, one day you will be cheated. Any comments or questions? Yes. Um, how does one become an expert at like relishing and engaging in Christian Qatar? Again, <clears throat> in our conditional state, it is very difficult to relish Krishna Qatar. The Baba can explain that uh Nibrita to Shakupajam, Baba said so Manobira. So this medicine Krishna Qatar is a medicine. <laughs> it's a huge head. It's a medication. And no, no negative side effects. <laughs> Yet, we need to be able to take it with courage. And that courage comes when we have strong sangha. And we have strong association. Otherwise, we may read it today and we say, oh, oh this is so juicy. This is the first time, it's so juicy. And then tomorrow we don't want to, we don't want to read it. We don't want to deal with it. So we should have strong sangha, constantly. At least each and every one of us, we should have someone that can help to motivate us. Because we we'll do we we'll, we'll do have periods when we feel low in our energies. We're feeling depleted. So here is what you do. The chanting has to be done during the Brahma, Brahma Muta hours. First class. Brahma Muta hour as the best period. Not just on for spiritual purposes, let, uh, 
some psychologists have developed some researches uh, and reported that the best period of productivity is the early morning hours of the day. All the things the Prabhupada have instructed us, they have scientific values. So, but how are you going to take advantage of that time for developing the routine? Please make a tell. You have to sleep early. If you sleep at 2 o'clock, watch movies until 2 o'clock before you sleep. You don't look you know, you know. <laughs> You're not going to be able to uh, wake up to introduce that Brahma. You want Ruchi? Ruchi? Right? Practice. Follow the practice. Hearing, chanting, the nine person devotional service. In fact, those of you who live in the temple, you are, you are the most lucky people on this planet. You're the most lucky people on this planet. Because, you see, what you have, you do not know, but I tell you, it's like uh, a car. In Africa, there is, a, there is a, an idea that a cow does not know the use of its tail until it is cut off. Then it realizes how the tail is so useful in wagging off flies, especially excessive flies. So, I can give you an example. If someone is, if you are very opulent, you are a very rich man, you are living at home, you don't have obligation. You just have, you're just an independent person. Nobody's going to tell you to come to Mongarati. Nobody's going to tell you to wake up and chant during the Mama motor hours. And so those, see, I, I, let me just give you a gross example. It's a confidential tip, let me give you a gross example. Just yesterday, I got a mail from, some, uh, from someone in a, uh, one country. I just visited that country three months ago. Then that couple invited me to their home. And then the wife sent me a message saying that she is having suicidal thoughts. The guy is very rich, very super rich. So she's living in opulence. You know what? She, another thing she said. He said the husband does not wake up to a child. So if you have plenty of money in your home, no one is going to check you. No one, you are the Ishwara. <laughs> but to be an Ishwara, you have to learn to control yourself. So it's very difficult to do a function by yourself. So in a community like this, there's always spiritual reinforcement. So you get energized. So take advantage of what you have. So have some strong sangha. If just by coming, attending the programs every day, you get that spiritual reinforcement and you could really become more and more in choose. The preaching is another thing. If you go, if you're a preacher, you'll find that you will always be in choose. If you are going out for Sangha, you'll find that you will always be in choose because Krishna will give you some, you know, some realization that you come back and you feel like, wow, how did I answer that question? <laughs> I never read this song before, but it, it just came. <laughs> Preaching purifies. And if you are in love with someone, you've got to figure out what is to be done to please this person the most. Krishna has revealed the secret of what to, why should be done to please him the most? He didn't just not want to kill demons. He came to reveal some secrets also. <laughs> he, said, he said in the Gita, there is no one more dear to him than the one, the person who is sharing this knowledge with others. So that's why he said, you have all the resources. No resources. So, first point, strong sun. And you are living in the temple, it's already there. You have to have someone that you are seriously interconnected with. Because sometimes people are living in the temple, even brahmacharis, they feel lonely because they don't have connectivity with a dependent friend. 
One boy in the US, I met him one. Uh, I went to one place. He was living in Asha. He was a Brahmacharya in Asha. So later he left. And so I was discussing with him. He left the Asha. He didn't go to college before he joined the Asha. So he left the Asha and he was working in a factory. I asked him, what is your age? He said, 24 or 25 or 24. I said, but you're still very young. Why have to use your life now to be working in a factory? You're already out of the tempo. Go to school. Then he complained at all. School, I will become a debtor. I said, come on. Everybody's a debtor in the United States. Almost anyone who has gone to school is a debtor. What's his excuse? Then, but the point is, why did he leave? He told me. He was feeling lonely in the ashram. He had no confident, confidence in him. So create some good relationship. Create Brahmacharyas, he had this. Create some good relationships. It is the Brahmacharyas, he had Create some good relationships. At least have someone in your life that you'll be able to share your challenges and your joy. That's what Rupa Goswami prescribed in the Upadha Sanskrit. I think it takes four. Any other comments or questions? Uh, just, I think about a minute and a half more. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, in the absence of any other questions, we'd like to move for the adjournment of this meeting. <laughs>